What's up guys? So my phone's hanging from a tree right now. So hopefully it doesn't fall. Uh, first of all, I hope you guys enjoyed that. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'd figure I'd give you guys a quick rundown of what we did for this run since it isn't complicated and you can easily replicate it with your friends. Uh, this initially just started out as a kind of for fun run, uh, but we did some optimizations to see how fast we could actually get. So the spark notes of this run is that we take advantage of his roar animation, how quickly he gets enraged, and essentially timing our greatsword charges to keep him stagger locked, basically turning his own enrage animation against him. For this to work, we use the quest Sandblasting, which is the only G-rank Teo quest in the desert, and we need the desert spawn to make this work. And desert Teo is just better in general anyway. Now, I was gonna go over the motion values of the greatsword charges and the stagger values for Teo, but there's no reason to try and make this sound smarter than it is. But, you know, who cares? Just hit him really hard in the head, and he's gonna fall over, just like in real life. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna walk you guys through the run itself. Uh, in terms of spawns, if somebody spawns with Teo, you have to start over because you can't have him aggro too early. And also, regardless of where you spawn, you have to far cast into the base. In this run right here, I already spawned in the base, so I just kind of chill and wait for my team. We're only buffing two things, Demon Drug and Might Seed. But since I spawn in the base, I'm doing Demon Drug, Might Seed, and instead of doing Might Seed in the tunnel like everyone else does, I'm actually going to do a Might Pill. That's something we can only do if we get a base spawn. Everybody buffs. We bomb ourselves into the area. Hopefully Teo is looking at us. If he's not looking at us, we have to reset. You're going to need a designated stone thrower. That's Alberto. And while he's roaring, you do a regular charge. As long as two of you crit, he will fall. And now begins the chain. You're going to do a regular charge. Slap and then you're going to strong charge while he does the enrage roar. And then that's pretty much the lock right there. Regular charge while he's on the ground. Hopefully those are critting. Slap, strong charge during enrage roar. And you don't always have to use absolute evasion. Um, you can kind of just walk around and reposition. Now, we're going to repeat this. Now, after the third topple, we're going to get the head break. You can also get a KO. It's important that you don't strong charge and you roll out of it or absolute evade like we all did here, yeah. Because if you don't do that, you can mess up the chain and he can get away. So you go right back into strong uh, regular charge into strong charge if you get the head break. Once you get past that little hurdle, then you're pretty much good to go. Uh, that messed us up a couple times, like knowing when the head break was going to happen. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, when we first started this idea, we went with the crit draw, quick sheath approach. Every other skill was necessary, so we accepted that we wouldn't be critting with our strong charges. And the damage was still enough to keep him stagger locked, as long as we didn't mess up. Now, we did manage to get sub 130 on stream. Yo. Did we just get it? Let's go, motherfucker! but we thought we could go a little bit faster. So we decided to mess with the run for just one more day. It was eventually Vanny who pointed out that we don't actually need quick sheath, that we have enough time to sheath and reposition and still get a crit draw, which means we were able to add another damage skill, which was initially gonna be hot-blooded. But then my boy Stefan, AKA Cutting Edges, proposed that we don't need to do the crit draw style at all. And we can go for a regular crit eye, crit boost kind of setup so that our strong charges could crit too. He hopped into Athena's ass and found a set that could get us at least 70% crit and still have earplugs. All of us but Vanny were able to make the set, so he still went with the hot-blooded idea. Then at that point, we were just at the mercy of good RNG between getting the crits we needed, good spawns, and a good Teo health pool. After all was said and done, we managed to push it down to 120. So yeah, it's pretty easy to replicate. Um, and once it started to get tedious for us, we decided to not try any further. Plus, we liked how our 123 came out, hence me using it as the main run, despite having a faster try just a few attempts later. Um, but yeah, go ahead and try to get sub 120 for us. Shoutouts to Vanny for pointing out that we didn't need quick sheath and for filling it for Ion, who was our original fourth. Shoutouts to Ion as well for helping us basically practice this from the beginning. 
Alberto for proposing the quest idea and execution, Stefan for constantly experimenting with sets and helping us go as fast as we did, and shout outs to me for pressing record. Anyways, happy hunting and stay safe y'all. Peace. That's that's too windy. That's too, that's too windy. The wind. <laughs>